Hi, I'm Cynthia Clark. As a soulmate palmist, I've discovered a system using hand analysis to identify your soulmate matches. Greater love is possible for you. There are six keys to soulmate attraction. There are 10 heart chambers in your hands that show you exactly what you need to heal. I can help you untangle dating confusion and work with the vibrational energy to change your vibration. True love exists for you if you claim it. Join me at loveinyourhands.com and find soulmate love fast. Thank you for tuning in to Love In Your Hands with Cynthia Clark, soulmate palmist, spiritual teacher, love coach, author, and speaker. We're sharing stories of love and connection and lessons learned along the way. This podcast is sponsored by loveinyourhands.com the place to ignite soulmate love fast using an innovative system to help you end loneliness and toxic relationships and elevate your vibrational energy to soulmate love and deeply compatible partners. Get started for free at loveinyourhands.com. And now here's your host, Cynthia Clark. Hi there, everyone. This is Cynthia Clark, and I am your soulmate palmist and spiritual teacher, and this is Love in Your Hands podcast. I am so excited that you are here today so that we can all learn from each other, and we're sharing stories of love and lessons learned along the way. And today I have a very special guest that I'm going to be bringing in. But first, I just want you all to know that I have been meditating and I've been going inward and contemplating how can I best serve you. And what came through for that was that I am going to start doing some readings on the show. And this is uh, something that uh, has always been near and dear to me. I mean, I've, I've worked with over 7,000 people in, in the last 12 years. And so readings to me are the core of my work. And the hands really are the reflection of all different aspects of who you are. They are there to help you and guide you. But sometimes there's so much information. It's almost like you know, having this huge volume of material and it's so vast that it sometimes seems unattainable or inaccessible or um, sometimes esoteric and difficult to actually bring it into real life situations. So part of what I want to do is to actually help you understand that your hands right in front of you have a practicality to them that you can use in your everyday life. And that's ultimately what, what we're here for. And by utilizing that information, you can actually connect more to love. You can find love. You can learn the lessons of love because the truth is it's all about love. <laughs> and when we can connect to that and when we know that, our life can open up in so many ways. And that is exactly what we are here for. We are here to reconnect to that love energy, to be in our full authentic power of who we are as spiritual beings of light and love. And so I am honored to be one of the people who can share my expertise from all my thousands of hours of study and all of my meditations and all of my inward journey and my outward journey too. And also um, just use that to guide you and help you along the way too. So anyway, this is going to be a really fun episode. I'm really excited. <laughs> So I am here to introduce a beautiful person. Uh, this is Annette, and she is a love seeker um, in the beautiful state of Florida, which I love Florida. Um, I actually did my uh, honeymoon uh, with my current husband in Fort Lauderdale, and we had the best time. <laughs> it was beautiful. So uh, definitely uh, lots of water around that place, and just that whole beautiful water energy comes through. So uh, thank you so much for being on the show, Annette. You're welcome. Thank you for inviting me. 
glad to be on. So, yeah, so let's go ahead and just start out by, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about you and what has been the lessons of love that you've learned so far? Well, I am a mother of three. I'm 50 years old. I had a birthday in March. Oh, happy birthday. Thank you. Um, I have uh, six grandchildren and one on the way. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. I, my experience with, with uh, romantic love hadn't been the best. Um, I feel like right now I'm working towards trying to uh, see what the issue is uh, with myself that um, I'm focusing on the wrong people. Uh, why do I tend to uh, allow myself to date the wrong people. So that's one of my biggest concerns. And just how to not be so maybe judgmental, so picky, but uh, to try to be more, um, you know, just neutral in situations. Mm. Um, yeah. And, uh, and let that go towards all my relationships versus you know, just, uh, and, you know, l allowing love to just shine through. Um, and uh, I think that's, that's about it right now. Yeah. Okay. And, um, tell us a little bit about your upbringing. Um, did you have some challenges growing up? Well, um, I have a, I have, I had a mother that raised me. She had five children. Um, there's, there were five of us. Um, I had a father that uh, passed away when he, um, when I was a, uh, when I was uh, a year old. And um, my mother uh, met and married my stepfather. They have been uh, married for about 47 years now. Um, but when it comes to male connection, I don't feel like I received the male connection of love that I should have felt. My mother was a good woman. She's an educated, very good woman. She was a, a school teacher for many, many years before she retired. But um, the family life, we are very connected as siblings. Um, we would pretty much do anything for each other, but I think the connection of father-daughter connection is not there for me personally. I've discussed it with, and, and there's three children from the, the uh, from my uh, biological father, and then there's two other children from my stepfather. So um, there's a two half siblings and three uh, biological siblings. So I spoke to one of the biological siblings and uh, she doesn't feel the same way do I, that I do. She was younger, you're younger. And um, she's a little more connected with my stepfather. And I think uh, she, she doesn't have an issue like I do, but I, See the, the issue in all three of the children who father wasn't there. I see a similar uh, characteristic. I see a similar um, way of being that I don't see in the other two that had the mother father uh, that was there. So I do know that there's a big issue with that. Um, I think my one of my siblings in a little bit of denial, but um, I'm willing and hoping that I can work through my issues so that I can, um, you know, find the love that I deserve. Mm. Yes, well, absolutely. Uh, and that's actually step one of healing is just becoming aware of what the problems actually are. So, once you become aware of it, it already starts to shift. So that's the good news. And I definitely feel like we, 
not only are meant to heal from everything that comes our way, but we are designed for healing and growth. So we, I mean, everything is here to guide us and help us to that next step. So uh, it, it's truly a blessing to actually go inward and look at things like this so that you can, you know, get out of that stuck energy and start to shift it. So, so yeah, so this is, uh, let's take a quick look at your hands. I'm going to actually uh, share my screen here. And so everybody can see. And if you're just listening, I'm going to describe stuff. So depending on if you're watching this or if you're listening, uh, we're going to take a look here. Uh, but yeah, so we've got a hand. Let's see, are you right or left-handed, Annette? I'm, I'm right-handed. Okay. So we'll go ahead and start with your right hand. I'm actually going to be looking at both hands uh, as we go through this. But uh, first thing we do see here on your right hand, uh, the first thing I like to look at is just your archetype and your overall energy. And what I notice is that you have short fingers and a long rectangular palm. This is what we call a fire hand. Okay, so your, your energy is fire. And fire types are very uh, passionate types. They love their freedom. They love to uh, kind of go in lots of different directions. They don't like to be restricted. So I love that energy. Fire energy is really passionate. And you've also got that in your heart line. Uh, the heart line is this uppermost line in your hand. It's actually one of your strongest lines also showing up in your hand. So you are very closely tied in with your feelings. And I would say that actually it can affect your own energy levels too. So for example, if you're not able to get your feelings up and out, you probably have trouble just with your own physical uh, energy levels. Does that make sense? Yes, that does. So looking also at your fingers, uh, we look at which is the strong finger. And on this hand, I would definitely say your Apollo finger, which is your ring finger, is your strong finger. And I can tell that because uh, what we do is we measure out the length of this finger versus the index finger. And as you can see here, it's quite a bit longer than your index finger or your Jupiter finger. Okay, so... Uh, this particular archetype is known as the Wheel of Fortune, which is um, a beautiful hand, by the way. There, it's a lot of dynamic energy, and it shows that you have cycles of abundance and then cycles, um, you, when you think of the wheel, it's always rolling, right? It's, it's continuously in, in motion. But some periods you're going to feel like, yeah, I got everything going on. And then part of the time you're going to feel like, oh, no, why is this not working? <laughs> okay. So yeah. that's where the Wheel of Fortune energy kind of comes in. There's a lot of creativity, too, that comes with this hand. So, um, and I think that was actually one of your questions, which we're going to get into here shortly. But um, there's a ton of creative energy that comes through a Wheel of Fortune. So. That is showing up on your active hand. And as far as like what you have to contribute, uh, you also can exude this energy outward. So for example, you can help a partner with their cycles. So if they're in a, in a kind of a, you know, stuck cycle, you can help them to get back into motion because you're all about that. And so that's something that you naturally can contribute in a relationship. Okay, so that's a beautiful thing. All right, let's take a look at your other hand. And let's see if I can figure out how to move over. Here we go. <laughs> Here it is. All right, so your passive hand is going to represent your secondary archetype. And what I see with this one is that your middle finger is actually your strong finger on this hand. So we still have the short fingers and a long palm, and this is known as the lover's archetype. So a lover's archetype is somebody who really values 
uh, relationships and union. It's somebody who is looking to partner. And this can also relate to friendships and, and other types of relationships as well. But definitely um, the lover's archetype is someone who balances their, uh, their emotional side with their, you know, their, their feminine and their masculine, you know, it's somebody who actually wants to tap into that. So I can see where you struggle a little bit. There's a couple of spots actually. Um, number one is you do have what we call a low set mercury finger, your little finger. Sometimes it'll drop literally into the palm. And when this happens, it does show that you didn't get enough um, affection or enough intimacy as a child. And a lot of times what will happen in adulthood is you will be attracted to more mature partners. And you really need a partner who can handle, um, they, they need to be able to step up to the plate. You know what I mean? Like they need to be responsible. They need to, they need to have their stuff together. Um, if they're too immature or they haven't learned yet, you know, how to deal with relationships, you're probably not going to be all that interested in the long term. You know, maybe it could work in the short term, but I would suggest not for the long term. Okay, so does that make sense to you so far? Yes, that does. Okay, so what we, uh, what I would recommend as far as um, what do you need to work on, there's a couple of things. Um, number one is we do have this shortened Jupiter finger. I can see that freedom too. Boy, you really need that freedom because that Jupiter finger really wants to kind of jet away from the rest of the hand. That's a freedom orientation. Um, but so we need to find a partner who can help you val like bring a, bring about that freedom. Um, but we got to work on this self awareness and self. Um, Jupiter represents the finger of self. Okay, so when Jupiter uh, is shorter, it literally means you can have a shorter view of yourself. Okay, you're great at presentation because that's what Apollo is all about. You can, you can show yourself to the world. You can, uh, you've got that creative flow that's just nonstop. But when Jupiter is shorter, it shows that you don't see all of your talents and skills and your value. So you can undervalue yourself. And when you do that, you can also put up with uh, either attracting a partner who will also undervalue you or you'll just not attract a partner at all. Um, so those can be some of the challenges with a, with that shorter uh, Jupiter finger. Mm. So does that make sense so far? Yes, it does. So, so what I would recommend as far as like just starting to shift the energy is you need to start looking at the value that you actually have, the value that you actually are. And sometimes you need to ask your friends or, you know, people who are really close to you, ask them, what do you see as a, as a value that I'm contributing? Because sometimes you just won't see it or you won't realize it as a value. So, but I would definitely say just from looking at your hands, you have an incredible amount of, you know, that passionate, expressive energy. You can bring about that kind of fiery um, passion. And you've got a lot of good things going on. So you've got, you know, if we take a look at this heart line, you can definitely, you know, you've got a lot of giving energy, expressive energy. You've also got a pretty big Venus which is this uh, lower section of your hand that it, we also call it the thumb ball region of your hand. And when it's kind of big and puffy like this, it represents a lot of ability to give. So you definitely do have a lot to offer someone, um, anyone really. Uh, but we also want to take a look at your receiving energy. And if we come back to your active hand, you know, I would say your receiving energy could use a little bit of work. Uh, and also your, it looks to me like your, your lifeline and your root chakra might be a little bit weak. So that, that relates to the lifeline. 
Mm -hmm. Not too bad, but it's got a little bit of stress coming into it. So finding ways to ground yourself uh, would be good. Um, by the way, fire types do really well when they uh, get some physical exercise, get their heart rate up. You know, that can actually be really good for fire. So I don't know if there's any kind of activities that you like to do there in Florida. Um, that would be something I would recommend. You know, okay. getting, getting some fresh air, getting outside, getting, getting your heart rate up. Um, personally, I like to, I'm, I'm here in Sedona, so I love to go on the hiking trails here and just get out and, you know, sometimes I'll even run the trails, <laughs> which is kind of fun. But um, I, I, don't, I normally just walk them. But anyway, uh, that is something I would recommend for you. And... You know, so you, you asked a question of, you know, you wanted to know if you're actually going to marry. Do you want me to talk about that? Yes. Okay. So, uh, by the way, marriage in the hands is a little bit of a, uh, how, how do I put this? It's something that is not accurately depicted. Okay, so we have these lines in the hand that are traditionally called the marriage lines, but they actually do not relate necessarily to marriage because I don't know, first of all, if there's that piece of paper attached to it or not. And secondly, um, the lines in your hands, in fact, all of the lines in your hands actually can change. Okay, so, but what we do want to check for is, are you ready for a relationship and is there a relationship actually on the hand itself? Okay, and so that, where we would look is just below the little finger and it's these little lines that kind of come um, horizontally into what we call the uh, mercury mount. Okay, so we want to take a look at that and what I see here is that there is a line here. Uh, looks kind of faint to me, but it, there is a line here. And let's also check your other hand. I'll check both hands. And so that would tell me that there is a relationship uh, that is a potential. Okay, now on this hand, I don't see too much going on. Okay, so that could mean that it's you know, maybe you're not quite ready yet for the relationship. Uh, mm -hmm. Definitely, though, this can change. Um, and I feel like we should pull a card on this just to see, you know, what's, what's up with that. But in the realm of infinite possibilities and the fact that you've got a lover's archetype, that tells me that you absolutely can attract a partner who is appropriate for you. Okay, so I, I don't ever want you to think that it's not a possibility because it is. And I would further suggest that you look for somebody who is, of course, deeply compatible with you. In your case, you've got the fiery hand. So your best match would actually be an air hand, which is somebody with long fingers and more of a square palm. So that would be, uh, that, would, that feeds your fire energy. Okay, and it's, you can identify the air types. They tend to be quite intelligent and curious and open-minded. Um, they're, they're really quite lovely people. So yeah, if you can find somebody, and that's the hand shape that they would have. And then as far as like a wheel of fortune, your best match would be with a strong, um, so that's your fire finger. You want to find somebody with a strong air finger, which is your mercury finger. So we call that the investigator archetype. Okay. So that's somebody who's really curious, smart. Um, they just like to know everything about you. They, they would literally put you in the center stage and they just want to lift you up. Like that's what an investigator would do for you. So um, they're really, really nice people. <laughs> Okay, so let's take a look. Let's just pull a card and just see uh, what needs to shift in order for you to find that person and what can you work on right now. Okay, so uh, the card that is coming up is the reconciliation card and this is actually from my own deck by the way. So I created this uh, deck of 72 relationship cards and 
the reconciliation card represents uh, coming to terms with your past. And it's, uh, to me, it feels like the more you do that and the more you uh, just resolve different areas of your past, you can take it one person at a time, one event at a time. Uh, just come to, don't be afraid to actually just take a look at those areas and just say, you know what, I'm going to resolve this right now. Bring love to that event or to that person. And then just, um, it's, it's interesting, we're seeing a picture of this beautiful couple on a lake. Um, it kind of looks like Florida, maybe a little bit, except for maybe the mountain in the background. Um, yeah. But yeah, so what we're seeing is, you know, to me, it feels like you're just letting the troubles float away and mm -hmm. float away from you. Okay. So yeah, I think you're definitely on track uh, for you know, getting yourself ready, but yet yeah, you need to value yourself for sure and, and start claiming that value. Okay. I know you can do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, um, so your next question was a little bit about, uh, it sounds like it's about inventions or you want to tell me a little bit about your next question? Well, um, I have inventions um, that I have in mind, and I just want to know, will they ever come to fruition? Um, will they be on the market? Okay. So, yeah, you have a couple of things in your hands that are showing really positive. And so I want to point these out. Number one is your, what we call your fate line. And what this means is that you are not stuck in fate, okay? This line actually represents your career path or your, uh, your work path, your, you know, the things that you take responsibility for, okay? And that's this line right here that comes up to the middle finger of your hand. Okay, so I'm just going to blow this up a little bit so we can kind of see what's going on. First of all, it's a very strong line, which tells me that you are very responsible and you are not afraid of work. You know, you're, <laughs> you're somebody who can really put in the time, put in the effort, you know, bravo. Like that is a, a beautiful gift. Um, not everybody has. It also is starting over here in Luna, which is showing that creative aspect. And you've already got all that creative energy with your long Apollo finger. So we can see it just coming right up the hand here, very strong. And then it's crossing over into the realm of Saturn, which is where it needs to go. That's what, um, you know, that, that shows the pathway. It's got a little bit of a tie-in over here with Apollo, which is that creative side. So ultimately, I would say it is absolutely, like this, to me, this is a very positive sign mm -hmm. that you're able to get this out there. Uh, we also want to check Apollo because Apollo represents your talents and how the talents are being used. Okay, so the first thing that we check for is the Apollo line underneath your ring finger. And this is a vertical line you can see right here. And you've actually got kind of like, looks like three lines that are somewhat forming into a star, uh, which is actually quite a rare marker. Uh, the star of Apollo represents creativity in the spotlight. Okay, so it's, to me, that is absolutely a beautiful marker that says your, your inventions are meant for the bigger population and the, more of a public kind of energy. So yeah, this to me is a very positive indicator. So the cha there's always one challenge with this marker and you've actually got it in a couple of different spots. You've got this little line here, that, which is sort of like a we call these challenge lines. There's a couple of different challenge lines and they relate to criticism and it can also be the inner critic. So, you know, if like, for example, if you're trying to get it out to somebody and have somebody else produce it for you or whatever, um, you might get a few no's like before you get your yes. Does that make sense? So 
Yeah. So be, just be aware of that and don't let it deter you. You know, you, you definitely have the ability. It's right here and just know the value that you're providing. And, and it comes from the place of this is your contribution, right? This is your service. This is um, the expression of who you are. So just keep that in mind too, as you get it out there and, and look at it from that perspective. Because again, we, we go back to your Venus Mount, which is huge. You've got this beautiful giving energy that you want to contribute. So, you know, that is something that needs to be acknowledged. And the other positive things that I'm really seeing in your hand is you've got a lot of vertical lines running through your fingers and that shows flow. Okay, vertical lines show flow in all of the fingers. Horizontal lines show more of a stress or a blockage. And I'm seeing a lot of flow in your hands. Um, especially in all of your fingers. So this is really positive to see. Um, you do have a little bit of stress in your thumb. You know, if we come over to, the thumb actually represents your willpower and you've got just a little stress in your throat chakra. So maybe speaking up again about your value, speaking up again about your needs and your desires and your wants. You know, I would say that uh, that's something you can work on. Um, and then having that courage, because once you do, boy, you've just got like all sorts of good energy. And this upper part of your thumb actually represents your manifestation. And you've got a beautiful ability to manifest. You've got a good, strong thumb. Okay. So I, I don't want you to give up on anything. <laughs> okay. So this is showing, uh, in, you know, as far as like your, your capacity and the energy, like I do see a lot of good energy here. So, and let's just go ahead and pull a card on it too. Let's just see, um, you know, what, what do the, what did, what did the cards have to say? Uh, yeah, the magician. Okay. This is a great card. <laughs> The magician represents your resources, okay? So it's basically saying you have all the resources you need to reach your heart's desires. And this is a card of manifestation. So this is definitely, a, you know, a big green light. You know, if that's what you're looking for, it's a big green light saying you can do this. You can pull this off. Do not give up. Do not quit. Uh, you've got it going. Okay. <laughs> I've been doing more manifestations uh, lately. I've been yeah. Working on it. yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So yeah, I would recommend continuing to do that. So yeah. So beautiful. You've got, um, you, you've got such beautiful hands. You really you. do. And you just need to start valuing your own true self, your own authentic self. You, you've got it all within your ability. So, um, yeah, this is, this is great. Yeah, so, um, okay. So let's go ahead. I'm going to stop sharing here and yeah, this has been lovely. So I just in closing everybody, um, I would like to, uh, send out the invitation that if any of you want to have your hands read, and if you have some questions for me, I am available in a podcast form now to do this, and it is my honor and pleasure to assist you on your pathway of love and happiness and, uh, you know, authentic fulfillment. You know, that's what it's all about. So um, until next week, uh, by the way, if you want to submit to uh, be a guest on the show, just go to loveinyourhands.com forward slash podcast, and you'll see the invite right there on the page. Um, so thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Annette, for being on the show. And um, everybody have a fantastic day.